Wyoming it is, boys. <laughs> Came in, just a little bit of snow spitting. Last, the last two years I've rifle hunted here, snow right here at this time. We're gonna be able to hunt elk primarily in the places that we bow hunt them in mid-September. And that's a big change for the last uh, two rifle seasons. So this is the fourth day of rifle season. It will be our first day on the mountain. And so no question, uh, guns have been fired, uh, elk have been pulled off the mountain, but I'm just confident that there's still plenty of uh, animals left. The word is they were bugling opening day. Wind was ferocious. Today's quite nice wind-wise from where we're at right now. And, um, so within the next hour, hour and a half, if luck be on our side, we'll be on horses and our gear and up the mountain we go and can't wait for Kevin Wilkerson to let that weather be roar one more time. Man. It's gonna be a hoot. I've been in the darkness for 40 days I've been Searching for holy flames A sign to light up the way So can you help me out? Can you help me out? came to kill elk. We found elk. Now we go shoot elk. That's the plan. <laughs> it's that simple. We've got it down to like three steps. See, pursue, shoot. Kevin's ready, I'm ready. We got three days to get this job done. And right now, it is like a bird in the hand. Yes, sir. Honestly. This isn't archery hunting. I don't think we have to just get all in a hurry and run in there. I think if you get waited, the face of that is grassy. But then there's timber, it's, it's secluded. They will feed around and are out to here. I like your chance of killing him is a lot better with that plan. Slipping to here is no problem as long as you keep your scent and out of sight. Oh, right. Oh, I mean, to where you realize you can't, really can't see through that dead stuff and you can pull back without blowing it. Right. Oh, I'm, I'm totally with you. Okay. It's 400 yards across it. Past this open saddle. Holy cow. 400 yards exactly. Get ready. They're chilling right now. One, two, three cows. Yeah, get ready, Kevin. Oh, man. I'm not seeing any bulls yet. Get, get right on that cow that's blonde. See him? See her right there? 
400 yards. Just think of 400 yards. Oh, we're moving again. Something spooked him. Getting ready. No balls yet. There's another spike. There's another spike. Another spike. Come on, big buddy, where are you? I see him. Good. Four hundred and thirty yards. Like Kevin said, I'll be surprised if I did hit it. So we got about a half hour walk up top to get around and um, we'll take a look see at what what we can find over there. But he was the last bull, so or the last elk, basically. So we'll see um, there's no track or there's no elk that's gonna be running over his blood trail if, if he's hit. We'll see, but we're going to pack up our packs and walk up this hill, and then it's, it's going to be about a half a mile loop around. We'll get over there and see. Just found the blood trail. Kevin spotted it right here, dude. Yeah, it looks good. No, that looks far. looks really good. Ken, it from all the way up there to here, it's a lot of blood. I like a lot of blood. It's a good shot. <laughs> you old cougar, you. Old <laughs> Jeez. So we got good blood. We're gonna sort this out. Thankfully, we got snow, but what we're doing right now is um, Kevin's going to crank his scope power all the way down. I'm going to crank mine all the way down so I can get the most field of view. And our thoughts on this is the bull is in deep trouble. He's not gone far, going to go far. It's been 20, 30 minutes since the shot. And... Uh, as Nate showed you, there's lots of blood on the ro on the snow, and we're gonna kind of uh, sort this out right here because he may have changed direction because we got blood coming right up here, and then um, we see a track going down with blood. So we're gonna sort out which which is the the, uh, the right track to be on and see if he went up that hill or he said no way. I gotta I gotta lose elevation. I'm not feeling well, but. Uh, Anyway, that's kind of the strategy when you get in this setup is here's get all your scopes, turn them down, get that variable. <laughs> if you shot it at uh, the highest because of the long shot, then now's the time you crank it down because if there's a follow-up shot required, it's usually um, a good chance that it's an elk that's on the move and you got to have lots of field of view. So we're feeling real good right now. That is He's definitely going uphill. Well, here's my question about my track that you're looking at. Why is there a track on top of the blood? He could have stepped on top of it. He, you, you, it, that's probably his hind leg. I hope it's not his. He, he would have faltered if you broke a leg. You got him in the main part of his body. Mm -hmm. Yep. What is that? That's it's probably uh, from his mouth. Oh, there's, there it is. Ooh. I'm going to turn it 
turn my scope down and get in the other chamber. We spent the last three hours of daylight looking for the bull and tracking it, and um, we uh, we stayed on the track pretty much until dark. Got a good idea of what timber it went into. We're gonna uh, tomorrow morning. We're gonna go get up on a high spot and look down, and maybe uh, with any luck, be able to uh, locate that bull. We're not feeling like it's a fatal hit, but uh, it it bled. If we had snow on the ground, then it, it would help things, but I think it's a muscle hit and uh, probably uh, a high leg hit. No, no broken bones, just muscle. But uh, anyway, it never laid down. We tracked it for probably overall about two miles. Tomorrow morning, we're uh, hoping for some redemption on what took place today. And uh, I'm thankful that uh, we're out here. She is breezy, and I guess today was the fourth day of season. It's been windy the entire season, but uh, tomorrow's supposed to get up a little warmer, and uh, maybe we'll see the sun, and hopefully this uh, wind will lie down just a little bit. We're regrouping right now. We're putting a plan together. We're going to go down and get some water right now from the seep, then we're going to head up into a saddle, which should be a pretty strong spot for some elk to be hanging around. Get out of this wind. There's a nice little bedding area. We're gonna get up on the Autumn's Ridge, take a look-see, and uh, the bull that uh, Kevin hit yesterday, it made this big loop around a couple miles, and it's looping right in underneath Autumn's Ridge. So we're gonna hustle up there, see if we can see him out, out and about. and. Uh, then we're going to probably move a little bit of brush this afternoon if we don't see him this morning or midday and uh, try to get him on his feet and get him in front of us. So anyway, that's the plan now. It's big country, so anything could happen, but we're prepared. We're going to do our, our due diligence, that's for sure. So first thing first, we're headed for water because we're pretty much out. blood again on uh, the bull that Kevin shot so we are uh, we can follow the tracks in the loose dirt there's not a lot of blood but he's hitting a big big swath of uh, dark timber right along the seep so we're hoping that you know after from impact it's been 24 hours that he would be in here and bed up and uh, hopefully we can find him dead or find him you know 
all but dead and can't get up and we can get another bullet in him and get him finished off but we found blood that was almost a miracle so now we're going to follow up and we got three four hours before dark we've got confirmed three or four more drops of blood he's a big boy digging in i think he's gonna he's got that side hill to go through once he gets through this strip of timber and then i think he's into big timber 1.7 1 and you did more and then today we did 1.5 tracked him the whole time yeah but he never laid down he never laid down he never let us catch up so it's a bummer i'm upset with myself but um i think we've done our due diligence for sure i don't know how you're going to find him he never laid down right never laid down we don't have snow we can't uh he didn't have a broken leg that's a fact he's walking he's yeah. not he's not doing anything weird yeah We had a good day today. We got to see a really nice strong bull right before dark. He stayed in the timber when we thought he was feeding out with the cows and some calves. And Kevin saw him as we were slipping through 
um, after tracking his bull. And we, we've determined that his bull is going to be fine that he hit yesterday. We tracked it another mile and uh, it went down into a seep where we thought maybe it would lay up and die if it was hurt, but shoot it. Took a drink basically and went straight up the side and went and never never laid down in almost three miles of tracking it. So I'm sure it was a, a muscle wound and um, you know we're just hoping good recovery for him. So we're gonna hit it hard tomorrow. Tomorrow's our full our last full day of the hunt. All right, it's October 20th, the sixth day of season, and this is our last full day of hunting on the mountain here in Wyoming. I'm with Kevin Wilkerson, and we are going to get after it hard. Kevin, <laughs> this wind is rough. Oh man, it's, you can see my you can't see my face, uh, and there's a reason for that because I'm freezing. Anyways, it, it, it's a it's definitely a mental game when you go to sleep in the wind and all you do is hear the wind and then everybody's up, you make an oatmeal and you're just like in a guy's sleeping bag. I kind of wanted to stay there. So but. we can't do it. We're going to, we're going to give her one more, one more good effort. We're going to go up on the other side of the mountain. So we get, we got up an hour earlier to, for our trek. And, uh, um, you know, I, I, the wind is going to be our friend to a certain point. If we can mentally stay in the game, I think, we're gonna see some elk and maybe we'll, we'll get a shot opportunity. So we're looking forward to this. This is a kind of a, a, a adventure day that I've been thinking about for six years. And, and now we got the dudes that can physically do it. And at the end of this day, they might hate me bad. And I'm prepared for that, <laughs> sort of. <laughs> because he could tie me in a knot. I can tell you that right now. And Nate, you know, he's, he's like a little piece of wire, so. <laughs> I'm, I'm worried about him, <laughs> what he might be able to do, so. Well, we just got up to the top. Yeah, we are. We are in the top of the mountain right now. The sun is just starting to make its impact. Just let you know you're alive, that's for sure. Elk hunting, in my mind, a lot of times when you're spike camping like this, it's you're managing the misery. There's always some kind of a hurdle or hurdles, pretty consistent. So we just pulled up a steep grade, and you know, we're we're a little broke down from three days of hiking and such. But in about an hour, we'll be right in the thick of it. Heard of you. I say we start angling pretty hard down. So the next time he bugles, it's gonna sound a lot closer. I'm gonna keep this in my mouth just in case we gotta stop him. That might be that seven by seven. It's a bull. It's a bull? Yep. He's on the other mountain? No, he's right here. He's above to the right. Ken, if you just come up here, you'd see. One, two, three, four. 
There's four cows. Where? Well, I just got kicked out of the way. Oh, yeah. The, right, to right. the left of that one. There's a bull in there somewhere. Got past midday. Now it's mid afternoon. It's three o'clock. We are crossed out of that beetle kill. We're up the other side. Kevin was um, kind of making a little bit of a almost like a elk drive to try to put, move some elk over to me. There were some small bulls and some cows, about seven head, but they all ran straight down the mountain. Now they've crossed over onto the other side and we may, we may end up catching them on the other side. But now we're gonna go work toward the, the water source and the springs and you know, maybe we'll catch them, Kevin. Yeah. I, think, I think we're gonna see more elk. Yeah, I think we're seems like there's a lot of elk in here. So we had three herds, three different groups. Some only had, I think they had one only had like four heads. And one had seven, and then we never did get to see the herd that was the bugle and bull, but they had the bugle and bull, but there were several head in that one, so. And for the first time, there's very little wind right where we're at, so that's at least nice. Yeah, and I don't hear it howling yeah. over there, so. Yeah. We get up there, we're in glass for a couple hours, work our way up toward that spring, and I think we'll turn up some elk. But being the last day, we might just put the smack down on a cow for some nice organic meat. We'll see. The wind was just wild. It was coming straight up the mountain, right in our face. We were so confident we were gonna get to walk, sneak down within 100 yards of the herd, but uh, shoot, Nate goes, oh, this wind is swirling, and sure. The further we went down, the more it went up, crosswind, downwind, everything in, in between, and they were long gone. So, but we got we got close to uh, some cows and some uh, some spikes, and we tried to make a move on them, and and uh, it was kind of the same same sort of thing. But uh, anyway, it was about eight miles of hiking, and and the wind never quit blowing. But uh, we got some really good exercise. This afternoon was a little bit slow. We actually split up and hit a couple basins uh, glassing. No luck there. But uh, what I did want to do is take a minute for our unabashed solicitation of the video. And that is we are in these uh, Alps single man tents. And we've got <clears throat> the zero... Their zero uh, downed bag with their insulated air mattresses. And I'm telling you, it's amazing 
how much you put your body through out here doing these backcountry hunts. And um, so we're in Wyoming. We're at 9,600 feet. The wind's been just ruthless um, blowing. And uh, we have been as comfortable, as snug as bug in a rug, um, feeling zero wind in the tent. And uh, with their, that this combination of the tent, air mattress, and sleeping bag, it is unbelievable. So my hat's off to Alps and what they do there. But uh, so that's the solicitation of the day. So pay attention to that one. Connor's going to slide in and re take over for Nate. Nate needs a break. So that's it. And we hope uh, tomorrow, um, you know, we have decent weather. We can get on out of here. Lord's been good. We've got to see lots of elk. And uh, we're just thankful to be out here doing this thing.